Okay, so we're gonna add a, a fan-made game basically to our looter, so it'll auto launch. So we can do this by just going add game, and we're gonna do like a Star Wars Galaxy uh, fan-made server. So we're gonna say Star Wars Galaxies. This one, we're gonna run through an actual script file that I created, and I'll go ahead and show that as well. You don't have to put anything in the release year, but I know this game was actually released in 2003. Um, we'll go to the game options. The executable is gonna be in my actual games folder, Star Wars Galaxies, and then it's gonna be swg.sh, I believe. And there that is, we'll hit okay. Now, since this is an SH file, this is going to be Linux. So even though I'm utilizing Wine and things, uh, since it's starting out in Linux, using that SH file, you'd put Linux. However, if I was doing like an executable file, we'd put Wine because we'd probably want to run that as Wine. So uh, just and showing a couple different methods here. And we'll go ahead and use the other method as well. We'll create another game after this one. Uh, working directory is just going to be the same as this one. So that's fine. We don't even need to fill this out because it'll still be working out of this. But let's say that SH file was like in my home directory. I would need to fill this out with uh, the actual game directory that this was running in. Uh, so with that, runner options, we have none. And system options, anything in here that you, you might want to change, like game mode, those types of things, that could help. So we'll go ahead and hit save to this. And you'll see this right here. Now it has just this default icon and we don't really like that. So we're gonna actually go ahead and configure this. And you'll see this identifier. Now you could actually change and put a custom, uh, you know, PNG file or something in there. And uh, you can do that. But since we know this is an actual game that people play and it's actually on Lutris, I just didn't wanna use the installer. We can actually launch into our browser. So let's go ahead, launch up in our browser on this other window. We'll go ahead and cancel this out. Go to Lutris.net and Star Wars Galaxies. Now I wanna show you something once we do this. Once we go to this page, you'll see this section of the address bar has our actual uh, identifier for this game. So uh, let's flip back to our tiling and I'm gonna close this out. And we'll go to configure and we'll change our identifier and let's see what happens. We'll go ahead and hit apply and save. Now what this does is it actually goes and gets all the graphic art and everything from that window. So it's kind of nice. So if we quit out and relaunch our Lutris, you'll see the graphic art come in. So we've created this, we've got all our art. It looks really nice. We're gonna go ahead and hit play on this guy. We'll just do that. And it'll say this is not an executable. Let's take a peek at the sh file just to make sure it is actually executable because that could be an issue. Oh, here we go. So it didn't actually allow executing the file, which is a problem. So let's go ahead and check that. So now this is executable and we can execute this file. So we'll close that out and let's try to relaunch it. And there we go. We got the Star Wars Legends custom fan made server uh, launcher. Uh, the reason why I have that sh file is because that sh file has uh, a way to run this. It uses actual Java, their, their, their actual launcher. So you can't just run this in Wine. It has a lot of custom options in the Java launcher. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit update to this guy now. Let's go back into here and we'll go down to the sh file. We're going to open this guy up in a text editor. So with this, this is a custom script I made specifically for this fan made thing. It, and basically what it's doing is running Java wine, which uh, this Java version is actually in uh, the Star Wars Galaxy path. If you look up here, it's going into lib JRE. So if we scroll all the way to the top and go to lib, JRE. This is a custom Windows based Java program that it's actually running. So I knew this Java works really well with uh, this version of the launcher and it runs Java in wine with the couple of these options to get the launcher to work. So uh, kind of a hacky workaround to get this launcher working, but one that was needed because of all of the customizability for it. This is the back end. Honestly, you just copy these settings and do this yourself, but uh, it's not really needed. So with our, our launcher done, we can actually just go in here, hit play. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pull this up one more time and let it update. 
And why this is updating, let's say we didn't want to use the launcher every time and we know everything's up to date. Now this one obviously needed to be updated, but let's say it didn't uh, and we want to just run the official Star Wars Galaxies executable and jump right into game. We can do that by going into here, add game, or let's say you're running just a regular Windows uh, game that doesn't have a custom Java launcher or anything crazy like this one. We can go select runner. This one's going to be wine since we're going to go right into Star Wars Galaxies. And we're going to call this one no launcher. Or you could probably put this one as launcher and this one is just Star Wars Galaxy. Um, but for this video, we'll just label it like that. Game options, executable, and we'll go right into the executable we need. Right here is the client. Now you'll notice setup and some configurations. A lot of older games, especially in the early 2000s, had separate executables for configurations. Uh, now instead of making another game, I'm going to show you a different method of launching into the options menu. Um, but for this, we'll just go ahead and hit OK to this. Uh, there's not going to be any arguments or anything needed. But let's say if you needed to do like dash no patch or something like that, you'd put in uh, your shortcut in Windows. You could add those arguments right here um, that would tack on to the end of this executable line. So really, really powerful. You can do a lot of really neat stuff with this. Uh, runner, you can change a bunch of these things around if you like. However, we don't need to. This game runs really well. Um, if you're running a DirectX 9, which this game happens to be DirectX 9, if I ran into issues with it, or I thought, hey, you know, performance was lacking, maybe enabling DX9 or D9VK would really help, especially on these older games. It, it can totally help a lot. But for this, we're just gonna leave everything stock. And again, we're gonna go ahead and change our identifier to that identifier that we got from Lutris's website and save that and you'll see that it pulled in the graphics art again. All right, this finished patching, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this, and now let's pretend we don't wanna do that patcher. Let's say we just know that there's no updates at all. So let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens when we go into launch. All right, looks like it all pulled loaded up just nicely. We'll log right into the server. And from the server, we can actually log into the game without having to do the launcher. So this is the no launcher version of just pulling right into here. It's, it's pretty darn awesome. I absolutely love this method. And as you see, we're in game, running around the Star Wars Galaxy universe once again. So kind of neat, uh, all on Linux too, so no no shenanigans needed and it's all on our nice little lutris launcher now obviously i don't need this method i could just launch it directly from here um, but i like to just skip that launcher when needed and just pump right into the actual game uh, and then let's say you needed to change some of the configurations we can actually run an executable from with inside this one so we're going to do that real fast let's go uh, sort by name and go down to like SWG options and see what we get. Um, we'll need to navigate to our folder. As you saw, that was just the most recent and it didn't have the options in there. So under SWG client setup, now obviously depending on the game, this could be like an options directory. I know like Final Fantasy 11 has something like this where you need to launch into this options directory and set a few things. Uh, for Star Wars Galaxies, if we look over here, we need to do window mode, borderless, set our game resolution, um, sound, make sure that this isn't disabled, um, no debug, advanced. I disable world loading and file caching for this game. And then I can skip the intro sequence as well. So all that is pretty awesome. Hit OK and it's saved and we're ready to go again. So we can easily launch right back into here by doing this. And we have both these options for launching. Now I can change this around a bit if needed, um, but I wanted to showcase those three versions of launching into a game using Lutris and it being like a custom fan made game like this.
So utilizing both these methods would be really good for other methods. Like I know there's like a project Cersei that does like Age of Empires online and, and revisits that whole game. And, and there's a lot of fan made servers. Uh, project 99, if you're into EverQuest, is another good use of this. Uh, however, uh, check Lutris's website, Lutris.net, first for your game. If there's an install script already made, obviously just click install and it just does it all for you. Uh, but sometimes you run into these really obscure titles and I kind of want to kind of pull back the curtain and kind of show some of these things to you. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as always, thank you to everyone that helps this channel. Uh, without your contributions, I wouldn't be able to make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.